Hey everyone, today I want to talk about this amazing watercolor by the artist John Singer Sargent. It's called The Scutcheon of Charles V of Spain. It's a detail from a fountain found in Alhambra. Uh, we'll take a look at the place later on. Uh, and it's definitely one of my favorite watercolor paintings uh, of all time. We're going to focus the discussion on drawing and laying down of a very thought out and taking your time to make a drawing that will later on allow yourself to go looser with the painting if you have done uh, your job. This is something that we see here in this painting from 1912. Uh, we also can see that in a lot of other great watercolor artists out there. And I see that to this day when I mentor up and coming artists, illustrators, uh, if they don't focus too much on the drawing, they go straight into painting. Uh, a lot of times they lose the overall understanding of what's beneath that. They want to go loose uh, with very st strong brush stroke from day one, but they don't have the underlying structure. And that's what we are going to talk here today. Uh, there is a post on this painting by James Gurney. He divided in five main things that we're going to look at. The first one, take your time uh, on the drawing. We're going to get back to all those details later on. But I want to add, first of all, another point that is really looking at your surroundings. I've talked about this a lot in other videos here on the channel, uh, especially the one finding beauty on the ordinary. And this is one more example of this same topic. Uh, this is the fountain uh, in Alhambra. It's out of, outside of the main building. And as you can see, uh, the painting we were looking at is just a small detail uh, over here. So it's not even the whole fountain. He did a watercolor painting of the rest of the fountain later on. Uh, and we're going to take a look at that as well. But this was a very specific detail. Uh, we can like go back and forth here so you can see uh, that's in there. He also did this quick sketch. Uh, I, I found that on a, one of the books that I own on Sargent. It's really interesting to see the looseness of understanding the overall proportions and distribution of shapes inside the fountain uh, and start looking at that and start understanding what's going to be interesting to tackle. Uh, if we look at the side view uh, painting that he did. He was focusing way more in the overall sense as well as capturing the contrast between the fountain and uh, its surroundings. If we jump into Google Maps, we can take a look at the surroundings for this place. Uh, as I said before, it's outside the main building of Alhambra. I can definitely zoom out later on so we can have a look and, and find the place uh, where it's located. But definitely a very pleasant bit, place to be. We're going to uh, see later on some paintings by Jane, uh, as well as a photograph uh, from Wilf uh, Wilfred uh, de Glen that were uh, on this day with Sargent uh, over here. So it's really interesting to see that they were taking the time to really uh, absorb themselves in this place, do a lot of studies, do uh, full paintings, take photographs, uh, as is the, one of the points that I'm going to be discussing later on. But it's a very pleasant place to be. You have where uh, to sit down. Uh, it it kind of seems that it, it was like this uh, back then as well. I don't know for sure, uh, but it would definitely be interesting to to be here uh, and draw. Please let me know in the comments if you already have been here and if you took the time to draw. Even uh, here, this is not uh, uh, taken by Google, uh, probably taken by someone uh, in there. So you can see a little bit of the lack of quality, but there was someone that seems to be drawing. We can see a sketchbook, a little bit of a sketchbook, or at least it seems like and taking some photographs uh, or, or making notes at least. So interesting to see the details here uh, and, and all of that. And if we zoom out, uh, we can see that we were here. This is the fountain. This is where that person was seated. Uh, we saw this kind of tower uh, structure as well as the stairways. Uh, and we can see that we are uh, in Alhambra, uh, Spain. 
So if we do zoom out, you can definitely see we are in Granada, in uh, the south of Spain. So uh, take your time. The link is going to be in the description so you can look around, look at other places. There are other amazing paintings uh, done in Granada, done in Alhambra. We'll definitely get back to that topic later on. But jumping back to Sargent paintings, as I mentioned before, uh, he was not alone. Uh, so this is the painting by Jane, uh, done in oil in the same place, or potentially finished uh, at home, even potentially using uh, this uh, photograph as a basis and remembering some of those colors, using her imagination in some of those colors as well, because this is almost sunset, so she would have very small, uh, windows of time to really paint that using this kind of uh, look and, and having that kind of feel. It's interesting that a photograph was taken here. I'll get to that point in a bit. But I also want to just mention that both Jane and Wilfred were painted by Sargent multiple, in multiple cases. They traveled together. So this is one of them. This is a, a very famous painting by Sargent. It's covers of, uh, of some books. So interesting to see the relationship with, uh, between him and other painters from that generation. A lot of this information can be found in these two books. Uh, one of them, it's the catalog uh, raisonné. Uh, I'm going to have links in the description, but this is the catalog from a recent exhibition in the National Gallery in Washington. Uh, this is a great catalog, great quality of images. So I'll have a link in the description as well so you can take a look. But let's get back to uh, our original discussion and take a look at some of, detail, some of the details here. I just wanna go through the points and I'll have a link in the description for the po blog post by James Gurney. But the first one is take your time for drawing. As we're gonna see, he really took time for that as I mentioned, I think even using photograph as reference, uh, I can't say for sure, but it is mentioned in the books, especially the catalog raisonné, that he used a compass to get this very round uh, point. Uh, let me change the color here so it's more visible. So this roundness here, was achieved uh, using a compass. That's what the curators mentioned. Uh, so they've been studying this a lot. Uh, he has used straight lines in a lot of uh, other drawings and pr probably this one as well. So taking the time. So I, I really think that giving all this information, this drawing was not done on location. That's my guess. Uh, but probably as you see, if we overlay uh, the real thing, and this is a photograph I could find uh, on the internet with a similar lighting situation, you can see that it's really close to what this photograph looks like. And, and it was probably positioned straight uh, onto the image because it has an angle, as we've seen before, it is uh, on the top of the fountain. So there would be a little bit of perspective if you were looking at that. So he compensated all the perspective to have this very flat orthographic view of this detail. So it's interesting, either he was drawing from an elevated position or really compensating mentally to all that, those changes, or he was working from a photograph like we saw before, uh, be taken from that same place and that same uh, period. It wouldn't be to the quality of this one that we're looking at right now, but probably give all the dimensions and big shapes for the drawing uh, to be done. So I definitely feel that this part of taking time for drawing, he took a lot of time, even bringing that to a controlled environment, a studio environment or a department where he was staying in, in uh, Alhambra and, and all of that in, in Granada. Uh, so that he could come back and really focus only on the painting aspects. I could be wrong. If you have more information, please share in the comments. So flatten uh, the lights and open the shadows. This is another interesting point uh, that James Gurney brings here. So a lot of, you can see that he's cutting a lot of the information and 
let me just bring that here. The shadows are very have very hard edges, uh, and inside the shadow areas they are really open. Uh, the values connect together, uh, so there isn't this big jump uh, in values and even this flattening of the lighter areas. We can see that the, there is not a lot of variation of values inside the light area, so that gap pretty much uh, keeps the lighting situation consistency and we can see the lighting uh, details as well. Uh, keep the shadow edges dark and sharp as we said before. If you have a, a big contrast between your shadow and light specifically in uh, on the edge of, of the shadow in there, you can have lighter areas, especially the ones that will have a lot of reflected light here. Uh, in, in the shadow part and not lose the feeling uh, of overall lightness. The fourth point uh, he brings is pushing the warm and cool uh, variations. You can see a lot of that in the reflected lights on under, uh, underneath some of the planes. The planes that are facing, facing down, they're going to have a lot of reflected light as well as the planes in shadow that will have uh, the light of the sky, the blue of the sky influence that. They are pushed as well to almost a little bit of a violet. So bringing a little bit of the complementary colors of yellow and purples slash violets in here to really push the overall feel of the image as well. I don't know if this is the original colors. Uh, we can only go so far in studying this. If you look at the Metropolitan uh, website, where uh, this watercolor uh, is currently uh, in their collection, it's unfortunately not on view. I would love to see this, but this is the color scheme that they have uh, here on the, the front page. But if you look down here, you can go through other uh, photographs that change a lot uh, in terms of the overall color uh, and this is a, a black and white one but you can see especially between these two there's a very big difference in the amount of the the reds uh, that you have up here uh, so it's interesting to see and and try to imagine what the original uh, would look like so the combination uh, between both of them and last but not least uh, the final point is putting the details only where you want it. And as you can see uh, here, a lot of the areas outside of the details are done very broadly. We can see even uh, the small uh, angel figures uh, in here, they are done really roughly with broad strokes, broad uh, brush strokes, and here, in, in the main area, the details, especially this area, the details were very thought out and really using smaller brushes or at least the smallest tip, tip of the, the brush that he was using. Um, Sargent used a lot of different materials. Uh, you can see even masks in some of his watercolor paintings and we'll get that back to that in, on, in another video. Uh, but here you can definitely see him taking the time. Uh, let's jump right in and look at some of those details uh, closer. It's interesting to see that even some of the letters that were uh, on the painting, and we, we can see that uh, down here as well. If we look at the first photograph, uh, he got all, even the typography here is pretty much uh, the same or very close to what we can see in there. And when we get to the details, uh, we definitely see that he was taking the time to look at all of those. You can almost lose those details if you're not taking the time to look at it. Uh, if we go back to the bigger picture, if we take the time to, to just try to find that, and if, especially if you were there, uh, you probably couldn't see it, uh, but he definitely took the time to look at those potentially using the photograph and get a lot of those uh, down on uh, pencil. If we zoom in, you can see the pencil work uh, in here. All the graphite uh, is coming through. 
uh, the drawing. And you can see that he used that coming in here, even broadly and not very detailed and intricate, uh, but following the lines of the drawing that he did before. So here as well, you can see a lot of those details. Uh, if we look at the, the photograph uh, here, you can see also a lot of the close details. Even there is a letter uh, V in there that you can, can't see uh, in, in, in very detail. Uh, and here, jumping on to the details that we were mentioning before, uh, it's really interesting to see that that flatting of the light areas that we were talking and some of the details uh, that come out to really uh, hold the overall readability of the image. So if we look uh, right here, we can see some of the details on the feathers were left out. As we can see uh, in here, uh, if we go back and forth, there are lots of details on those feathers that were definitely left out. And it just reinforces what James Gurney was mentioning of putting the details uh, where you want them to be. Uh, we can see those details here. Uh, they are really uh, taking the time. Some of them, uh, some of them are left out. Uh, he even decided to put just two of those instead uh, of the, the five that we can see. You can see a little bit down here, but they, they definitely changed a little the configuration in there. Uh, they were supposed to be up here. Uh, so that can attest as well against the theory uh, that he was using a photograph, especially a photograph underlay to some extent. Uh, so the letters once again that are harder to see uh, in from a like naked eye and, and he was definitely looking from a lot of different sides and different lighting situations to find all of those de the details. You can see the, the amazing, beautiful line work uh, in here. Uh, I'm always really struck by the quality of his line work and to be able to look at that with a lot of details, uh, it's really great. So take your time to, to look at the image. You can find it in high resolution as it is uh, under Creative Commons and definitely even worth doing a study of this, a copy of this. I would love to do it. I'm scared of trying it out, but definitely would be an amazing exercise. Just before uh, we leave, I wanna show another example uh, on the same topic. This is another watercolor by Sargent. This place is Cliveden in England. And this is a detail uh, of a Borghese balustrade. Uh, this is the balustrade. Uh, as you can see, even the composition, and we discussed that a little bit in the beginning of the video, as well as my video on composition, deciding what you're gonna portray and how you're gonna portray it goes a really long way. Uh, if we look here again and even go closer in detail, we can see a lot of those details and even those dragons and, and the ego in here, uh, they were taken out in the final image. So they are really, really rough. The idea was to look at the overall picture and how to use those repeating, uh, repeating shapes. Uh, the line here is beautiful, we're gonna get to that. But it's really interesting to see how he gets something like this and turns that into this. Uh, so just uh, some zooming in here to look at the details. As I said before, the grouping of lighting uh, as well as the line work here uh, and even the way he does these strokes to get the separation in there, uh, it's really uh, interesting using a little bit of a reflected light, so getting this area more uh, warmer, as well as the com uh, complementary colors once again. We can't know for sure what the original looked like uh, in terms of colors, but there's a little bit of red and greens here uh, complementing each other. Uh, more architecture details and interesting line work. So definitely check that out as well. Take a Take your time to, to really study 
And once again, take your time to do your drawings. You, get, you, you see that the overall painting is very, very loose. Even some of the brush stroke in here, the shadows and, and all of that, it's very loose. Watercolor gives us the chance to connect a lot of those shapes. If we look uh, in here, we can see a, a lot of those uh, connections between the, the brush strokes and the, the, the water acting uh, right here. But as you have a very thought out and, and, and very structured drawing beneath that, you can read uh, what you're seeing in there. So take your time, if, in, if you are doing a watercolor, if you're doing an illustration, uh, illustration, it would definitely help out the final result of your painting. So that's it from me. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this amazing uh, image. And if you've been there, please let us know in the comments. Uh, it would be great to chat a bit uh, about that. I hope to go there myself someday. There are lots of other amazing paintings done uh, in this area or using this area as reference from Soroya, Edwin Lord Weeks, and a lot of the artists that I really admire and that you have seen here on the channel before. So go ahead, great studies, do your drawings, do your paintings, and I hope to see you all again in other videos. Have a great day, take care.